Hello, and welcome to the Shaltazar podcast. My name is Jeffrey Eisen. I'm a spiritual life coach, channeler of Shaltazar, and an energy intuitive. We're back with episode number 17, the second in the new format, and I am thrilled over the top with our guest today, Marla Martinson. Marla is an author, energy healer, angel communicator, and matchmaker. She has been using her intuitive skills to connect singles with their soulmates for over 15 years. Marla also hosts a podcast called The Mystical Matchmaker and the YouTube show Cosmic Conversations. Besides being an author of five books, she's a regular contributor to Wonder Lost Travel, Marla's award-winning spiritual memoir, The Buddha Made Me Do It, humorously chronicles two years of her spiritual paranormal odyssey in Los Angeles. Thank you, Marla, for joining us today. I'm really excited to be able to share with the listeners how your amazing spiritual journey has helped you in your practical life and helps other people as well. Yeah, thank you, Jeffrey. Hi, everybody. (laughs) From sunny Los Angeles. That's right. It's October and it's still like it's been 90 degrees today, maybe 80. So we're still still in it and it'll cool down maybe in December if we're lucky. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's all right. It's it's all good. Marla, tell us, tell the listeners just a bit about yourself and how your spiritual journey began, uh, first of all. Um, And then, uh, you know, as as the show goes on, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how we can apply some of the things that you've learned in your spiritual journey to your practical life. Yeah, well, you know, I I've, I've, guess I've been on a path uh, most of my life. Uh, the first time I guess I, I started delving in was when I was 27 years old in the, in the 80s. I think, it was the, I think it was 1989. Somebody gave me uh, a book, a little red book called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin, which was written in 1925. And it, it was, she was a metaphysician and, and it was all about, um, she has a Christian bent kind of background where, you know, in her um, affirmations and prayers, but she's really a metaphysician that teaches us with our affirmations and, and really kind of its law of attraction. You know, we can, create the life we want. And I really loved that. And I went to it, the only spiritual bookstore in LA at the time, the Bodhi tree. And I bought all of her books, which I think she had four or five. And uh, from there, I started going to watch Marianne Williamson speak before she became famous. And then it was Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra and all that through the nineties. And then I started going to a spiritual church in LA. And so I was doing all of that and my affirmations and my law of attraction stuff and my prayers and, um, stuff like that but then in uh 2013 my friend julie and i julie's one of my bffs and she's a celebrity ghost writer she lives right in my neighborhood she was the editor on my second book and and uh we discovered that we both are we're into like getting tarot card readings and you know all these cool spiritual metaphysical occult things and uh, we ended up in my book the buddha made me do it 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 tells the story of how this happened but long story short i ended up going to this uh metaphysical shop in 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 the valley here in la that had classes um very cheap like 15 dollars for these each class and you could learn how to uh, connect with your spirit guides. There was crystal healing. There was things like that. Julie and I started going in October of 2013, and we'd go in the, every Wednesday evening, and it was cool and crisp at night, and it was so magical. And we were hooked. We were having so much fun that we decided to start taking any kind of class in spirituality and occult and paranormal, whatever it was in Los Angeles that we could find. So we were hopping around, going to Indian bhajans, learning about how to use pendulums, candle magic. We, I went to channelers, we went to psychics, we did, I did breath work. I mean, you name it. And, and we were having a ball spending a lot of money, but having a great time and deepening our, our spiritual practices. And then Julie, because she's a, she's a writer, she's an author. She says, Marla, why don't we write a book and chronicle all of these amazing things we're doing? And we were supposed to write the book together at first, 
Uh, but I, she backed out. She was too busy, and I ended up doing it myself. And if anybody's interested in any of those things, you're going to love it because I do it with humor. And some of them were, you know, some things were phenomenal. Some were weird. My husband was like, thought I'd lost my mind. And Julie was losing her mind. Uh, she was had a crush on the neighbor who uh, was just trying to get her to have a booty call. And she was obsessed with him and getting candle magic and going to psychics to fight. You know, it's just like a madcap spiritual odyssey. And the, the um, adventure continues. I'm still diving deeper and I've started uh, the, the sequel to that book. I just started it recently. So that's the short version of what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent, and 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 it's interesting as I'm hearing you talk. It uh, you know for a lot of people on their spiritual journey, it's it's pretty serious matter because they're coming from this place where they really gotta feel they have to fix themselves. And thank you for sharing your story because your spiritual journey can be enjoyable. It can have a little bit of fun, and it can uh, you know have some some levity to it. And and you know serendipitously, you wound up writing a book from it. So uh, you know just a, an interesting point for the listeners to be aware that although uh, you know the spiritual journey often seems to be a very serious matter, uh, you can have some fun doing it. It's important to remember to enjoy the journey, and it sounds like you have as well. Now, maybe we could sort of talk about how some of those things you learned. And of course, as you're talking about Marianne Williamson and Wayne Dyer and all of the, you know, the, the, the metaphysical shops, it's like it really brought me back uh, to the uh, to when I uh, went on my uh, journey of self-discovery and, and, and spiritual discovery. And I, again, I, I repeat, I felt pretty it was pretty serious at the time. But looking back, it was like. Wow, I mean, there's some really neat stuff we did. Uh, you know, like you say, pendulums and crystals and sound healing and shamanic healers and all of that. It, 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 so please enjoy your journey, listeners. Marla, what would you say to the listeners has been some, have been some of the uh, benefits that you've uh, got from your spiritual journey in your personal life? Well, uh, the first thing, there's a couple of major things. Um, I'm also, as you mentioned, a matchmaker. I've been a matchmaker for 18 years now. And um, my specialty is uh, like I'm a millionaire matchmaker. So it's the wealthy men who want the gorgeous women um, for long-term relationship or marriage. So it's serious. You know, I'm a real life Cupid. But but the fact is my, my clients are those men who are wealthier and busy and um who want what they want they can be demanding they can be extremely picky um there's been times when they can be i mean most of my clients are wonderful i'm so blessed to have this career but they, they can become abusive and angry because um you know find to trying to find the love of your life is very emotional and and it's not like somebody pays you and you hand over a a, a couch or a car and then they drive it away it's you know they might maybe they are not going to find somebody and, and if they don't work on themselves it might not work out so I do try to do some coaching so the spiritual side that I've really do dove in and added with the energy healing and and the meditation and a lot of the things that I do uh, has has balanced that out and helped me raise my vibration I know how to cut energetic cords and clear myself and send my clients energy some of them have even come in and had some healing done by me or distance healing or in person and and um, I I've, I've come from a more um, I've never been like a person who let's say in traffic will flip somebody off or yell or have rage or anything like that but I noticed looking back there will be times when I will just explode like right like it'll push me push me push me and then or or you know you'll write one of those texts out of frustration and then you're like oh my god why did i do that it's opened a whole can of worms so i've i've learned to um temper my reactions i'm more grounded i'm i'm clearing which i'll get into some stuff i'm doing now uh but that's that's cleared out some of those old childhood uh, triggers or wounds or even who knows past life where where my reactions are different and and I used to cry I mean if somebody would yell at me and threaten well I'm gonna sue you if you don't uh, and then I'd, I'd cry but I don't cry anymore you know I'm just like oh well it seems like you're really having a 
hard day today. Let's, you know, talk about that. Or, you know, I'm very, it's like nobody's going to push me over the edge anymore, uh, which is great. So that's. Yeah, that's excellent. You, you raise a really great point that I would, I would like to uh, reiterate. Uh, a lot of people who go on their spiritual journey think that uh, they can bring this sense of, of nirvana, this, this enlightenment to their human experiences and that everything will be fine. And, and you're a perfect example, I think, of more of the norm. We go on our spiritual journey and we still have our day job. We still have that job that may not feel as fulfilling, as uh, enjoyable, as in alignment with our spiritual beliefs because there are financial constraints. And, and I know a lot of people that are, uh, you know, that have to do that. And I think it's part of the journey. And so the idea is not to go on this spiritual journey and then necessarily get a, a new job that is, that is totally in sync. I guess I'm one of the lucky ones and I, I greatly appreciate that. But as you're talking, it, it, you're, you're showing people that it's, it's not the day job you have, it's the new attitude, it's the new energy, it's the new learning that you bring to that day job, to the job that may not be as uplifting and that's the important part and uh you, you know you you uh articulated that very very well and i think that's important i want to keep driving that part that point home because i know so many people that i work with they figure they're going to go on this spiritual journey and then they're going to uh, you know instantaneously give up the job that they've been doing for a long time that they're very good at but just don't enjoy would you agree Right. Well, this is a great point, too, because there are a lot of people out there who are in jobs that they hate or that it's just mediocre or they're longing for something else. And yeah, for me, I make great money as a matchmaker. I work from home in my yoga pants and I can travel. I can take my laptop and work from anywhere. There's so many amazing things about it. Um, so I'm not going to quit. I have a you know mortgage and a family and all that. So that is what I'm going to keep doing, but bringing that energy. So if you think of yourself, because I told my shaman, I've worked, been working for a year with a shaman privately, and I said something to him because I also do the energy healing. I said, oh, some other psychic or something said I, sh I should be uh, doing healing full time or something came through. He goes, Marla, you are, do you are doing healing full time mm. because I'm healing. So, you know, if you work at a, a retail store or you're a waiter or whatever, you're not just a clerk or a waiter. You are a healer. You are a light worker. You can bring that light and that energy and that love through to each customer. You can bless each person. If you do some energy work, you can even blast them with a shot of Reiki. There you have to know it or, or, or bless their food or, or bring that. So every person is important in all these positions and all these jobs. And uh, we have a lot of work place rage and, and unhappiness and malaise and people using too much caffeine or maybe drugs or drinking, you know, martinis when they get home because they're not happy. But we don't have to do that. We can shift while we're, if it's really you're not happy, yes, explore something else on the side that you can cultivate and, and gradually move into. But in the meantime, you can bring a different um, energy and, and purpose to, to it. Right. So yeah, that's, really that's an excellent point. It, it's when we go on our spiritual journey and all of this stuff we learn, it's not necessarily to mm, change the life we have. It's just changing the perspective on the life we have. And, and you raise some excellent points, um, whether it's your family or your friends or your career, you show up with that spiritual wisdom of um, looking at things differently, of coming from understanding, of, of as you said, uh, showering Reiki love, um, helping someone calm down. I, I love what you, you said um, in, in terms of some of your, your clients, because in some cases they, you know, they represent the people who, who have not yet gone on the journey and you are planting seeds. You are planting seeds and hopefully some of them um, will come to that realization that their, uh, you know, that their their money and their trophy wife is not going to bring them happiness. And often, as as light workers, sometimes the best we can do is plant those seeds. It's not our responsibility to fix people. I think our responsibility is to love people as much as we can. Absolutely, yes. And um, 
so so what I'm doing now is I I ended up um, meeting a shaman here in LA and decided to do he channels an, an, a guide an Indian guide that is so powerful and uh, he does these one-on-one -on -one sessions and I decided to work with him one-on-one -on -one because my marriage was still very tumultuous it was very uh, my husband was pushing my buttons I, I just didn't know how to get around it he had whatever his you know his personality that was clashing with mine and and I notice now looking back I'm, and I I just could and I had the same the thing is I had the same issue with um, my uh, previous husband I, I've been married three times uh, first time at 18 the second time at 27 and the third time at 40 41 and we've been together now 18 years but I, I was like looking at it thinking okay he's doing this but who's the common denominator and who has the same issue every time for the last 30 years or 40 years that's marla martinson yeah. <laughs> so i thought you know i need to figure out what is it in me my vibration the way my, i'm reacting my frequency my past or whatever what is it that i keep accepting and attracting this kind of situation and not that he's a bad man he's a wonderful man but there were things that the dynamic was not working and i would just get so mad and point the finger and and then he so anyway i couldn't get around it no matter what i did i spent thousands of dollars with different modalities different there you know spiritual therapists healers until i met my shaman and realized i needed to do very deep work going into these shamanic journeys where you spend the whole day together you go into this deep work that kind of goes he explains it as you're going on into the basement and cleaning out the cobwebs and the dirt and looking under the, the things and do i want to keep that or this and throwing things out uh past life you're clearing past lives you're clearing childhood you're clearing family lines you're clearing patterns you're clearing and crying and crying and crying and clearing and and then there's some beautiful things that happen in there too, but a lot of it, it's hard work. It's you're doing the work and he's like, I'm so proud of you because some people will be in the middle of a journey and they're like, Oh, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. I can't go forward. And he's like, well, you're in it now, <laughs> but I was willing to do the work. And even I'm in my fifties, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to keep going with this pattern until I'm, you know, 70, 80, 90. I, I'm just not going to do it. And, it's been a whole year and I'm still going to work next year on it, but things, my marriage is harmonious now. He shifted because I did all my shifting. He didn't do anything different, uh, but mm -hmm. he's decided seeing what I'm doing. I think that my vibe frequency and all that, that he's calmed down and he's not pushing my buttons anymore. And, um, so it's and it's not absolutely perfect, but it's like almost, I mean, like a, it's, it's like 98%. Shift. Excellent, excellent. You've yeah. raised some excellent points. If you don't mind, I'd like to, to comment on some sure. of them. Um, one of them, uh, which was the last point, is that when we shift, other people shift. And that's so important to realize. Um, often we think that it's, it, it's, it's about the other person. And, and the second point I want to raise is that's personal responsibility. And that's what you realize is that uh, you know, and, and I can see why you're a matchmaker after three marriages. I guess you sort of understand marriage and, and good for you. And that's terrific. But you you had the personal responsibility to realize that it's it's not the husband's, it's you. And so realizing that we need to do the work on ourselves. And when we do, the other people around us will change. So those are really, really important practical points. And the third one I want to uh, the third point I want to bring up is that it is a journey, no matter how long you're on this. And and I know people will say, um, uh, yeah, we understand it's a journey, but they really hope to get to that destination. They really hope to get to that point when they're all fixed and they're all better and everything is wonderful. Certainly from Sheltazar's perspective, uh, we'll never get to that point because we live in the planet a free choice and of duality and we're always going to have the ups and downs so that's why if that's the case and it is a journey if we own that personal responsibility then we can continue to work on ourselves and good for you for being so dedicated to do so 
And then you come to that realization every once in a while, and I don't know how many of the listeners have, have got to that point, but, but I have as well, to realize that when you shift, the people around you shift, and that is a real powerful aha moment. Yeah, they do. And not to say that, like, let's say my husband, he could benefit from a lot of this work. Does he have his own issues? Yes. Is he going to work on him? No. Uh, so, you know, he whatever he's got, which is most of the population, everybody does, every single person, if anybody you walk up to and talk to and have a conversation, you'll find out they were hurt as a child. They were abandoned. They were molested. They grew up in an alcoholic home. They had a bad breakup. Their spouse cheated. I mean, everybody's got some stuff that's kind of damaged us, chipped away or messed things up, kind of rearranged <laughs> everything. So every person's got pain and hurt and that which will affect our choices, you know, in relationships and a lot of things. So he's, you know, he's not going to do the deep stuff I'm doing. And that's his choice. That's his journey. And, and it was like a, a kind of dark night of the soul for, for a few years there because he thought I lost my mind. I was like doing all this crazy stuff. And that was okay. It was hard for him to wrap his mind around some of this stuff and to accept. But now he sees the benefit of and he's like, oh, you're healed now, which is funny because he's not taking responsibility too much on his side of it. But he's like, you're healed now. And, you know, he sees the difference. We're getting along so great. We're so happy. We're harmonious. So, yeah, it's the everything has shifted um, because yeah. of my work. So, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's another great point. You keep raising these great points for the listeners. <laughs> Thank you for that. And, and I've, I've known many, many people who uh, say, well, you know, I, I, it'll never be better because my spouse isn't going on the journey or my kids are, aren't going on the journey and, and my friends don't understand what I'm doing. This is a personal journey. And I'm sure you would agree because you did it. Yes, we can have support. Yes, we can do it if we're lucky with some friends or maybe even some relatives. But this is the journey within. This is about you and your relationship with your spirituality, the relationship with you. It's about rebuilding a new relationship with you. So, uh, you know, I, I, I will tell people that use the excuse that, you know, my spouse doesn't understand it, my spouse thinks I'm crazy. Marley, you, you, you really uh, helped drive that point home that you went on that journey, you didn't feel you needed the support of your husband, and at times he thought that you maybe were losing it. And he's come around to realize that the work you have done has changed you and has helped the relationship. And once again, that's what I will call planting the seeds. So I don't know if he's ever going to go on a journey. It doesn't matter if he does or doesn't. But what does matter is he's seen you go on the journey and he's seen some positive repercussions from that. So I highly recommend those people who feel, well, I can't go on the journey because I don't have my spouse's support, my family's support. Please don't use that excuse. Go on that journey, go deep, you know, and, and you, you certainly, uh, you know, mentioned that even though you've been on this uh, journey for a long time, you go to the shaman and you find something deeper. Sheltazar says, says that it's all about the layers of learning. And so again, that's the journey that we're on, layers and layers of learning. learning. You take off one layer and sure enough, there's gonna be another layer to be healed as well. Yeah, and, and I guess all of that stuff leading up to it, my mind's completely open to accept a lot of things and know what's going on because the shaman also channels a spirit who comes through uh, an Indian Native American who comes through and he does healing on me too. So I'm being healed by not only the shaman, but the spirit that comes through him. So it's, you know, some people will, you know, they can't accept that or believe it or they skeptical, but you know, that's okay. That's, this is the deep place I had to go. And, and we don't realize what's trapped inside um, our cells, our body, our emotions. We might say, oh, yeah, I, you know, whatever, my dad treated me bad, but um, I'm over it. I, I've forgiven him. I'm over it. Or some things that maybe really affected us, even getting bullied in school or, or some choices that we made. Maybe you cheated on your spouse at one point or any, anything that you think, you know, well, it was pretty it was major, but you think, oh, I got it. Oh, I'm over it. Guess what? It's trapped in there. And I was shocked 
at things that, um, you know, for instance, okay, I was bullied in school and, you know, there was just things that we all go through uh, that can be, have a major impact, but you think, okay, it's done. But all the, the crying and crying for hours every time um, that I didn't mean to cry, it was just coming out and coming out and coming out. And then uh, if you do breath work, there's something called breath work people can look into. And that is where you're doing this deep breathing for it laying there for like a half an hour. And it, it, it also releases so much um, uh, emotions and cellular memory and pain and trauma. Uh, even in yoga, certain poses like I do, and then I'd start crying because those emotions are, are in our in our organs are trapped in there that we don't realize. And I think that can cause us disease. And so finding a way to get that out, even if you think you don't have anything to, to release, you do. We all do. So yeah, that's, that, that, that's an excellent point. Shiltazar has, has taught me a lot about uh, those uh, what I would call lower and slower emotions. I've I've said it before, and I just want to repeat it again. It's really important for us not to judge our emotions as good and bad, because as a society, um, we're often told to to suck up the bad emotions and 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 um, not to express them. And you're absolutely right. I believe emotions are energy in motion, and if we don't if we don't express them in a healthy and appropriate way, they get locked in our body and definitely will form dis-ease. Uh, the other thing, uh, and, and thank you so much for being so transparent and open, um, so many people feel they have to pretend that life's okay and that they don't, uh, you know, they shouldn't talk about their abusive parents or, or being bullied. And uh, thank you for having the courage. It's really important that people start talking their truth and not burying those um, uh, issues of the past. It's really, really, really important that we open up to our truth. And uh, there are more and more people like you, Marla, and myself that are willing to talk about that because a lot of us have uh, these traumas locked away in us. And if other people um, start talking about it, then maybe you feel you have the courage to do so. Oh, yeah. And, I, you know, I had a good childhood, but there's things that will stick, you know, like when the bullies at school for a few years bullied me or uh, there was a lot of alcohol abuse in my family, extended family, and, and witnessing that was very uh, difficult. And just th things that we might think that you can get over easily, it's still, it's still, um, there, I was attacked uh, at one point in my 20s by two men. They almost uh, killed me in my apartment. Um, mm. I was saved at the last minute. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, it's just something that happened. But that probably was stuff down there <laughs> to come out. Um, yeah. If we think about it, there's quite a bit to, to clear out. And, yeah, and it's not just like I said, I'm not ashamed at all. People are always like, Marley, in your books and everything, you're so candid. You share about your struggles um, you're like the every woman, you know, because there's no point in trying to just show yourself on Facebook or Instagram as this perfect, polished, you know, piece of perfection, because nobody is. Everyone, um, we have to help each other and support each other. Um, and that's why there's a big divorce rate. It's why there's so many singles that can't connect and people are not happy in their jobs. Uh, they're overeating. They're finding ways to stuff down um, emotions. Um, but it's okay. It's okay to, to bring them up and to release them and to um, to do all that work and to share because I, I like I said, I don't think any person, I, I haven't found one yet that, that could just say, yeah, everything's been perfect since I was born and, and <laughs> you know, I have a perfect life. It's yeah. that's otherwise I don't think we'd be here. I think we came. Shelters are probably speak to that why we came why we're here on 3d if, if it was all perfect I guess right what would I, I truly that? believe that that is one of the purposes of human life is to be able to work through that and and I use the line nobody gets a pass and I, I don't yeah. think that we're meant uh, to get that pass uh, one comment I'll make is um, I truly believe it often takes more energy to put on that that uh, mask and, and show people on social media and hide your traumas and hide your challenges. It takes more energy 
to do that than it does to be able to release those traumas and those difficult times. So uh, you don't realize uh, how you are not doing yourself a favor because you're extending all of this energy uh, to pretend that everything is okay. And as you were talking, it reminds me of, of Brené Brown. I think a lot of people have heard of Brené Brown and, and vulnerability. And, and yes. you, you're, you're a, a, an excellent example of that. And you do it with such candor. You do it with such ease. And that's because you obviously have let go of any shame or guilt. And, and uh, Brené Brown talks a lot about shame and guilt. You have let that go. And it's so easy for you to let it all hang out and share it. And, and thank you for that. And thank you for inspiring our listeners to do the same. Once again, I, I repeat, it takes more energy to hold it in. It probably is a lot easier for you to tell all than to try and, and come on a show like this and pretend uh, that everything is, is fine and you've got it all under control. Yeah, and not that you have to, I mean, I see some people on Facebook, you know, purging everything about, you know, it's so much drama. I don't, I don't do any of that. I don't put it like on Facebook and it's something that, oh, this person just cut me off in traffic and then I did this and this day and using it as a therapy session. No, I'm not doing that. But definitely in my blogs, in my books, in my, you know, um, podcasts, whatever, I, I enjoy sharing it because people can relate and it's going to help help people so um yeah i think people are a lot more similar than we think they are and mm -hmm. it is that it is that separation that difference that we think this one has got that and that one's got this we again from shaltazar's perspective we have all come here for the learning and growth and the more we get together and hopefully uh this podcast is helping people realize that the more we get together and talk about it and share the solutions that have worked for you and worked for me the more we're going to be able to inspire other people to go on this journey yes and one more thing like instead of going and getting that expensive handbag that you think will make you happy or uh you know a expensive car you can't afford the payments go join a yoga class or take a breath work class or do some you know past life hypnosis or regression or something like that that's where i put my money in fabulous self-work instead of trying to put a band-aid on it by getting you know some some uh you know stuff <laughs> no i love that i love that that's fabulous advice often we we are spending in a way that's probably perpetrating the problem because we think we can buy our way out of our unhappiness or discontentment or frustration. And uh, both you and I are examples of the fact that that doesn't work. Again, owning that personal responsibility, investing in yourself, going within, going on that journey and, and clearing out the swamp, the inner swamp is a far better investment um, than the, the material possession. So, Excellent. Yes, I'm draining my swamp. I've been draining my swamp for the past year. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And, you know, that's the good news. The not so good news is you'll probably be doing it till the end of your life, just as I will. So, yeah, but you know what? I like it. It feels good. I, I you know, I it's OK. It's 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 I think I mean, for me, it's it's fun. And my and what's brought with it is like you were talking about different jobs and stuff. I dreamed I always looked at people who were doing mediums like James Von Prague or people that give tarot readings or intuition, intuitive stuff and work doing all this inner work and the um, energetic uh, attunements I've gotten and all of this stuff. It's opening, it's been opening me up um, my intuition and my abilities. And I've been doing uh, readings for people. I mean, every day somebody's ordering a reading from me. I'll do Oracle or Angel or Tarot or whatever, and I do these readings, and, and it brings me so much joy, and the people are loving it, that that, even though I still, I do like the matchmaking, but like you said, there's the, you know, both sides, the light and the dark to that, but this, just countering that with, with making a little money at, on the side, that's my spiritual side gig, you know, the healing and the readings, that brings that magic into my life because we're all looking for some magic. We all want that, you know, that sparkle. And so right. that's what I've done to bring it in. And everybody can can get their little, you know, side gig going if they're not half, completely happy with their main gig. 
Right, right. And, and, and again, you raise a good point that you, you got to be those people that, that you admired by doing your own work. It wasn't going uh, and, and uh, studying online. It wasn't going uh, to school and getting a PhD. You were able to become more intuitive, to be able to do the readings when you did your inner work. And, and that's so important that uh, if we want to get to that place, there is no shortcut to the inner work. Yes, and and something I was listening, I, I record every when I go to the um, my shaman Riz. He has this circle of light in Los Angeles every week, and we all go and and then he channels um, his guide. And I was listening to the first one I went to over a year ago, and and I was listening back at my message, and because he goes around and gives us each messages, and I was saying, yeah, I want to open up more so I can channel and to do this, and he says, well, what Riz tells people first is before you can do that or, or try to do that, you need to look at what's going on in your own life, and he told me that now, later, he says, well, you weren't able to open up so much before because you had because what was going on at home, there was too many arguments, there was bickering, there, it was not harmonious, it was, there was not, it was not peaceful. And so that prevented it. But once I started working all that, because to, to hear spirit and to really connect, you have to be p at peace with yourself and be in a peaceful, quiet state and not have your, um, so my uh, nervous system, my central nervous system was pretty much fried before and now it's reset. So Excellent. it's calmed down. And so that's what you've got to get to. Because we look at people like that, you know, sure, I'd love to be like, I'm not at James Von Frog level. Would I like to be? Yeah, but what did he have to do? It's not going to just happen overnight like, a, you know, lightning strikes. <laughs> right. So it's a, now, it's a long you, you long may journey, get there. Right? You may get there sooner <laughs> than you think. Maybe. Who knows? Keep, keep working on yourself. Uh, the time has gone by so quickly. Marla, thanks so much for being a guest. Uh, I'll give you an opportunity to say a few words, any per personal self-promotion that you want, and, and then I'll uh, I'll tie it up. Thank you so much. You're an excellent guest. Again, we could have gone on forever and ever. I have to have you back on the show. I know the listeners are going to enjoy some of the wonderful uh, points that you brought forth. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, everybody, if anybody wants to connect, my website is marlamartinson.com, M-A-R-L-A-M-A-R-T-E-N-S-O-N.com. And all my books are there, my healing, my matchmaking, my coaching, my readings, everything is right there. And I'd love to connect. And um, thanks for having me on, Jeffrey. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. All of that information will be on the description for the podcast, uh, Marla's uh, uh, bio, as well as her contact information. Uh, once again, my name is Jeffrey Eisen, the uh, channeler of Shaltazar, a uh, spiritual life coach, and then energy intuitive. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope um, you will listen to all of the episodes. Uh, please check out my new website, jeffreyeisen.com. There's lots of information uh, on there and lots of sharing. Um, and uh, if anyone is interested in a personalized Shaltazar reading, you can get in touch with me at jeffrey at jeffreyeisen.com. Uh, it's a, an interesting offering I have where I call upon Shaltazar uh, to bring you a message and then I help interpret it. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, this is the Shaltazar Podcast. Take care, everyone. Big love.